I'll be able to go, Karen. It all depends on Daddy's mood. After one of Rusty's little league games, you never know how he'll be. You know how emotional men get over a silly game. Of course, if they win, there won't be any trouble. But if they lose, just, just a minute. I can't go. <laughs> you lost, huh? They won us. Five to four. You don't say they won us. Say they robbed us. <laughs> Help with that no good crook of an umpire. But, Daddy, he isn't a crook. Don't tell me. I'm a judge of character. I know a crook when I see one. Two to one, he makes a living breaking into piggy banks. He does not. Everybody knows him. He runs the butcher shop. Uh-huh, butcher. No wonder he could use that thumb so good. You're out. <laughs> then you weren't just a little boy. You were another lamb chump. Butcher. I think he was dishonest? Get this, Terry. It's the last inning. We're losing five to four. There's two out, but the bases are loaded. We got a chance to bust this game wide open. Rusty's at bat. There he stands, straight and tall. Rusty? Straight and tall? Yeah, Louis put too much starch in my uniform. <laughs> Anyhow, he's standing there straight and tall, and the first pitch comes over. Low. Low. When I say low, I mean two gophers, Doc. That's how long. <laughs> and this thief hollers, strike! Is that good? <laughs> no, it isn't good. Well, it isn't bowling. It's not bowling, this is baseball. Pay attention. Now, the second ball. Real high, way over his head. I'm surprised it didn't kill a couple of pigeons. Real high. <laughs> and this thief hollers, strike two! Imagine. Imagine doing it to a fine little American boy like this. A kid who never, never did a mean thing in his whole life. This crooked butcher. No heart. Comes the third pitch. By this time, Rusty knows what he's up against, so he swings at the ball, and he foul tips it. But this thief claims Rusty never touched the ball. Called him out on strikes. We lost the game. Maybe he was right, Daddy. I didn't feel the ball touch the bat. What do you know? You were standing at the plate. <laughs> you can't see anything from there. I was sitting behind third base. <laughs> you see everything from behind third base. It was a farce, a travesty on justice. That's what it was. Oh, Daddy, you're taking this whole thing too seriously. My son gets carved by a crooked butcher and you say I'm taking it too seriously? It doesn't matter whether you win or lose. It's how you play the game. What? That's what our coach says. Oh, he does, huh? Uh-huh. Is he nuts? <laughs> I don't know, but you certainly can't go through life losing all the time. Come in. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi, Uncle Jesse. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Jack. Dan, a little business came up. I thought we ought to discuss it. Hey, Russ, I'll fix you a glass of chocolate milk, okay? That'll make you feel better, huh? Okay. Better make it a double. A double? You know, that kid's hitting that stuff pretty hard. He's liable to wind up in homogenize anonymous. <laughs> well, now that you're so limp with laughter, let's get down to business. I was talking to Sam Miller today, and I insisted that unless he matches the Copa deal, you don't play his club. Okay? Dan? Yeah, sure. And incidentally, the ice show is going to be playing that week. And I also specifically insisted that he has to take out a lot of extra newspaper space to advertise your opening. Double at least the usual we've been getting. All right? Dan? Sure. And I also told him that if business holds up, we're going to donate your body to science. <laughs> All right? Sure. <laughs> sure what? You're gonna donate my... <laughs> You're not even listening to me. What am I, talking to myself? You better start listening, brother, because this is important. If we don't go in and protect ourselves with plenty of advanced newspaper space, we'll be butchered. Butchers. <laughs> Butchers. There's anything worse than a dishonest butcher. It's a dishonest butcher who is also a crook. <laughs> 
I think I said the secret word, butchers. <laughs> Talking about that thief that umpired Russia's Little League ball game today. They lost again today? The 16th game in a row. <laughs> this one, they didn't lose, they got robbed. Oh, Jesse, I gotta tell this to somebody that understands. Get this. It's our last inning. We're losing five to four. There's two outs, but bases are loaded. Rusty's at bat. And there he stands. Straight and tall. <laughs> yeah. Now, the first pitch is low. But I mean low by his shoelaces. Strike one. <laughs> yeah, strike one. The second pitch, so help me, Jesse, would have been high for Gary Cooper. Like that. Strike two. <laughs> strike two. Huh? Now, the third pitch comes across. Rusty Powell tips it. But what do you think this no-good Dillinger yells? Strike three, you're out. <laughs> and you blew the ball game, huh? Too bad. Oh, that poor kid. Rusty boy, you're only a little boy, but believe me, you've got the, the heart of a giant. Now, this may seem terrible to you now, but believe me, 20 years from now, you'll look back and you'll laugh at the whole thing. These things are kind of hard to swallow sometimes, but remember, time heals all wounds, huh? Now get lost. <laughs> How about the Sam Miller deal? Sam Miller? Sam Miller, my kid gets robbed of a crucial ball game and all you can think about is Sam Miller? Daddy, you're getting all, yourself all excited again. Can't you forget it? No, I can't forget it. As long as I have these incompetent umpires, it's gonna happen all the time. Where do they get these crumb bums anyhow? They're not crumb bums. Most of them are just dads that volunteer. Dads volunteer to be umpire? Uh-huh. Is that so? <laughs> well, now, uh, who do these dads volunteer to? Mr. Sims, the head umpire, I guess. Yeah. Gee, Dad, could you be one? Why not? These thieves have been calling them against your side all this time. It's about time you had a thief on your side. <laughs> How do you get a hold of this, Mr. Sims? Well, I think I got his number right here in my little league book. Huh? It's under S. Thanks a lot. <laughs> it was under Z. Daddy, yeah. do you know how to be an umpire? Of course I know how to be an umpire. I know all about baseball. I know plenty. There's a trouble with this whole setup. They don't take advantage of the dads who are experienced. Hello? Hello, Mr. Sims? Now, this is Danny Williams, Rusty's father. Yes. Fine, thank you. Look, uh... Mr. Sims, uh, I've been thinking. As a father, I haven't been giving as much time to the league as I should, and I'd like to take a more active part. What? Clean up the popcorn bags after the game? <laughs> <laughs> well, frankly, I was thinking more of doing something down on the field. No, not water it. <laughs> Look, Mr. Sims, let's get right to the point. A man of my experience in the game ought to be an umpire. That's right. Yeah, I think I'm qualified. All right. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Follow the hook, huh? Like a halibut. <laughs> I'm meeting him at the field house tomorrow to discuss my first assignment. Oh, boy, maybe you can umpire Thursday's game. Why, well, what's so important about Thursday's game? Well, we're playing the Orioles, and every year, no matter what we do, they always manage to win. Hmm. They're the same umpire, huh? No, that's not it. Well, how come they always win? They're better. <laughs> that's a pretty sneaky way to win a ball game. Yeah. But don't you worry. When that dad of yours gets out there on that ball field and calls him, things are gonna be a little different. You bet. <laughs> oh, Daddy, you're so wonderful. I'm gonna go break into the boys right now. <laughs> what a kid. Well, Daddy, you sure made yourself a big man with him. <laughs> Dad, I gotta hand it to you. You're a great father. Thanks. You know, there's, there's a lot of responsibility goes with being a good father. You got to take your boy by the hand and lead him down the path to manhood. And it's not easy. But you get your reward when you see that light in his eyes. That light that says, my dad is the most wonderful guy in the whole world. And when you see that look of admiration and respect on his face, I don't know, somehow, suddenly, you stand ten feet tall. Yeah. Tell me, how do you figure on throwing the game? <laughs> so, 
tell me, have you had any experience in uh, baseball or umpiring? Well, I don't want to sound immodest, Mr. Sims, but I happen to have a box at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> uh, well, I think you'll find it's a bit different with the Little League. Now, I have a copy of the rules right here. Uh, oh, I must have left them at the butcher shop. <laughs> Well, in any case, you'll find it's one thing to be calling him from behind the plate and quite another to be second-guessing from behind the stand. Second-guessing? Yes, like that fellow at yesterday's game. Sitting behind third base and <laughs> praying like a jackass through the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> Made a complete idiot of himself. Now, uh, let's see what game we can start you with. How about Thursday night? That's a good night for me. Very well. Uh, Thursday. Uh, Forbes is the base umpire. How about putting him behind the plate, calling the balls and strikes? Oh, that'll be fine. All right. <laughs> Williams. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Your, uh, son's team is playing in that game. Oh? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> well, uh, it, uh, wouldn't be quite fair to let you umpire your son's game. Sir, are you implying that I would even for one moment be guilty of so little integrity as to show favoritism to my son? Oh, no, of course not. What I'm concerned about is that you lean too far back in order not to show favoritism. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. I, mean, I can be fair to my own kid, you know. Good. You know, uh, it isn't every father who'd have the courage to put himself on a spot like this. But you'll have a wonderful opportunity to demonstrate the honesty and integrity the Little League stands for. Yeah, sure. And you can show your son the principles of fair play and good sportsmanship in action. That way, he'll uh, see that principles are much more important than whether he wins or loses. Yeah, but it's nice to win. No, only if you've earned the victory. It wouldn't be terrible if our kids grew up thinking and it's all right to get anything you want by dishonesty and deceit. Oh, no. You don't think there's any danger of that, do you? Oh, there is, unless we set a proper example. You see, kids learn from what we do, not from what we say. And that puts a big responsibility on the parent. Yeah. Well, of course, there's some parents whose only concern is winning, like that Loudmouth behind third base yesterday, remember? Oh, yeah, him. Now, that poor fellow has completely missed the whole idea of the Little League. So it's up to the rest of us to show a good example, right? Yeah. Of course, uh, uh, on the other hand, I mean, not that I do it myself, but, gee, I can understand a father calling a close play in favor of his own son, can't you? I guess you can. <laughs> well, welcome to Little League. Thank you. How do you feel now that you're an umpire? I feel like a barracuda about to destroy its young. <laughs> Hi, Dan. <laughs> Hi. Get ready for the game, huh? Uh, yeah. Where's Rusty? Upstairs. I want to congratulate him on the victory. We haven't played the game yet. A mere technicality. <laughs> After all, you're the umpire, huh? Look, if you or anybody else thinks I'm gonna cheat, you've got another think coming. Cheat? Bite your tongue. <laughs> Nobody's asking you to cheat. All we're asking for is that, that little old edge, that little house percentage, that's all. Just what are you driving at, kid? Well, look, pal, like, uh, like if there's a close play, it could go uh, either way, you know what I mean? I'm gonna call him as I see him, Jesse. That's right. You call him as you see him, in Rusty's favor. <laughs> Jesse, if Rusty's right, I'll call him in his favor. If he's wrong, I call him against him. What? <laughs> Leave me alone, will you? I'm having enough trouble. You know what's going on up here. Leave me alone. I want to see my boy win, and I want to help him win. 
But this little league thing, it's not just baseball, Jesse. I, I never realized before. It's quite a thing. There's a responsibility to the child that you don't know about. I mean, look, if I make this easy for him, he'll go through life expecting everything to come easy. It'll ruin his character. And I suppose losing 17 straight games will improve his character. <laughs> the kid will grow up with an inferiority complex. <laughs> He'll go through life expecting to be defeated. Don't you understand? Yeah, but I, I gotta teach him integrity, don't I? Integrity and schmegrity. <laughs> Remember what Damon Runyon once said? We played the game fair we played the game square. Naturally, we lost. <laughs> yeah, but the principles of fair play and good sportsmanship are more important than winning. Spoken like a true loser. <laughs> you, really, you really expect me to cheat? Who's asking you to cheat? Just give the kid the little edge that he hasn't gotten in 16 straight games. Don't you think he deserves that much? Think of all the times the breaks have gone against him. Now you're in a position, you, you, you'll be able to do something about it. Yeah. As his father, I think you owe him that much. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you said it. Hurry up, Terry, if you're coming. Okay. Terry, you going too? Sure, right, yeah. I see that. You never went to any other games, how come you going to this one? Especially since we're going to win. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to win, all right. There's nothing like having that little extra going for you. Especially if your your dad happens to be the umpire. Come on, umpire, let's go. Yeah. Maybe if the game finishes early enough on the way home, I could stop by and rob a bank. <laughs> Well, that's the way it goes, eh, guys? You, some win and some lose, huh? Didn't see Rusty, did you, son? Guess he went on home. Some game, wasn't it? I should think, Mr. Williams, under the circumstances, you wouldn't want to discuss it. What kind of a crack is that? Even you must realize some of those calls you made were pretty embarrassing. You got any particular beefs, bud? Well, yes, yeah, since you mention it. That last call you made. <coughs> what about it? Well, it was just a bad call. I could see it clearly from back of second base. Is that so? I was behind the plate, but you could see it better than I could back of second base. What, I got eyes like an eagle or something? Mr. Williams, let's forget the whole thing. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, you're telling me. Especially that call you made in the third inning. You mean when that boy slid into second base and I called him safe? You bet that runner was out by a mile. He would have been, but the second baseman dropped the ball. How long did the ball supposed to sit in the glove? Till it hatches? <laughs> Rather not discuss it. I called it as I saw it. As you saw it or as you wanted to see it? What do you mean, sir? I mean, I think there's a little action going on here. That's what I mean. Somebody's paying off somebody. I just want the minimum clock. Look, Buster, if the shoe doesn't quite fit, I'll loan you a shoehorn. <laughs> I'd walk away, too, if I were you. And I struck a nerve, didn't I? <laughs> Guys like you could ruin this little league movement in one day. I'm surprised your parole officer lets you officiate. <laughs> Brazilian on the fix, too. You know what your trouble is, Mr. Williams? You know you made a bad call, and you're suffering from a sense of guilt. Because of that, you got a big chip on your shoulder. Well, how'd you like to come out and try to knock it off? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Excuse me, Father, I mean just plain cow. <laughs> I mean, excuse me, Father. Oh, I don't know what I mean, Father. You're right, I'm suffering from a sense of guilt, all right? That last batter was my own son. 
Oh. Well, you really were in a spot. Well, what could I do? There's my kid at bat. His team has lost so many games. I'm, I'm ashamed of what I did, Father, but I just had to do it. True, but calling your own boy out on strikes. <laughs> Especially after I, I promised to call him in his favor. When it came right down to it, Father, I, I just couldn't do it. I hate to go home and face the kid. What'll I say? What'll I tell him? The truth. That rather than help him because you were his father, you just had to lean over backwards not to show favoritism. Of course, you leaned a little too far. <laughs> I didn't think he'll talk to me. Oh, you're exaggerating. Am I? Went home without me. Ashamed to be seen with his dad. Can't say that I blame him. I really don't know what to do, Father. You just got to be a man about it and, and tell him that you did it because you love him. That you were only trying to be impartial. If you just face up to him like a man, look him straight in the eye and tell him. Yeah. You're right, Father. That's all I got to do. Look him straight in the eye. Like a man. I'll go call him on the phone. <laughs> What kept you? Stop by to pick up your 30 pieces of silver? <laughs> well, if it isn't my former father. <laughs> you leave me alone, both of you. Just leave me alone, please. I'm having enough trouble as it is. I gotta talk to Rusty. How can I face him? He'll never forgive me. Where is he? He's in the kitchen. Would you please, uh, my former daughter, ask him to come out? <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to be alone with my son, please. Oh, yes, great white father. <laughs> what are you gonna do, beat him on top of everything else? Will you stop making with the jokes? Look, this is a crucial point in my relationship with my son. I may have scarred him for life. I have to explain to him that I... That I, that I had to do it, that I had to do it because I was trying to be impartial. I was trying to set an example of integrity for him. <laughs> and because I am his father, I had to lean backward like that. It's a pretty hard thing to explain to a baby, but I gotta make him understand somehow. Yeah, okay, Dan. I wish you luck. Thanks, I'm gonna need it. Sit down, will you, son? Look, boy, I want to explain about yeah, the game. I know. You goofed. <laughs> you were telling me I goofed. I expected it. As soon as that ball went past my ankle, I knew you were going to call it a strike. Look, son. I, what could you do? You're my father. You had to lean over backwards so as not to show favoritism. <laughs> Yeah, but you see... I know you said you'd cheat, but I knew you wouldn't because I knew you wouldn't want to set me a bad example by being dishonest. <laughs> you knew all this? Mm -hmm. Why did you let me umpire the game? Because we wanted to set a record. What record? Well, we're now the only team in Little League history to ever lose 17 games in a row. 